All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> this is Carlos, your host, and Mr. Juan. Good morning, Carlos. Good morning, members. Good morning, Juan. How's everybody doing? Let's get started here. 8.30. Yeah, let's go. All right. So press number five if you can hear and see. All good. No problems. That would be the best. All right. That's good. All right. Welcome, everybody. All right. Let's get started. Today's, unfortunately, one of those rare days. Let me bring over. Juan, can you verify? Today was uh, there's a couple of things going on that will limit our decision on trading. Yeah, today we have um, it's actually a bank holiday, Columbus Day. And there will be low liquidity and irregular volatility on the market. Let me bring that over because this is definitely going to affect us. It's right in here. All right, here we go. All day, bank holiday. Let's see, we got um, remain over. All right. Forks broker remain open except Christmas and your day. Okay, stock market and banks have slightly different holiday schedules. When closed, it's less liquidity. Yep. And speculators become more dominant, meaning stop loss hunt is going to be the order of the day. Everybody acknowledge that. Do you understand what I just said right there, right? So if we decide to make any decisions today, for my, in my standpoint, would be probably, if I don't see anything fit, I will not take any trade. But if I got the urge to trade, I will switch to demo. All right? So basically, one of the things that I might do is just go over here. It's from one of my accounts, right? I choose to simulation, sim, and then we'll continue on. All right? That would be the cue. I mean, this is the solution if you're eager to take a trade, all right? Just to, just to let you know. <clears throat> Nevertheless, <coughs> opportunity, opportunities may be here, maybe not. Another thing that I want to do pretty quick is, <clears throat> a second. I want to uh, provide a very warm thank you to John Connor to provide us the link to find his uh, label horizontal lines. Now you can see the targets here, which is awesome. Thank you, John. Sorry that we didn't have the chance to come up with it. Um, but it's, it's, pre it's pretty amazing. It's pretty nice. All right. So that's pretty cool. Love it. And I appreciate it, John. All right. So if you're somewhere in here, um, once again, I would like to thank you. All right. So, yeah, this is how the, you see, the community help each other. You know, you guys help us out with your inputs and we try to put them together as, so, as long as it makes it easier for everybody. It's awesome. All right, let's just get started. I saw here the, the e, e, I mean the oil pretty quick. I'll continue on with the other ones. Here's a power zone. Let's see members here, the uh, the founding members. What would happen? What can happen? What will always happen every time that the market hits a power zone? Anybody? Pretty quick. So uh, we got new members here visiting us for the first time. So we can help them up on the chat. That would be awesome. Reverse, John said, reversals, yes, what we can, we can expect, Robert says 10 to 15, Christine says reverse for 10 to 15 ticks, 10 to 20, absolutely, let's see what the market has done, obviously the uh, ATR is 14, but ha that already happened, obviously, before we got it in there, so here's the hit of the inside the zone, and immediately from that point, here's where the prices are right now, and that is an 8, eight so i'm expecting at least a 10. let's see where that would be 10 would be pretty much where it is right now 63. actually that's uh yeah that's a 10 63 boom that's 11 and there you go that's the power of the zone unfortunately it was faster than us but it's it's awesome to see it happen isn't it guys um so yeah the zone is doing its thing which is the most important things for us to know, uh, you know, to 
to get ahead of. Juan, can you find a power zone in the upper side here? Yep. <clears throat> Just in case. Today, we might take a trade if I see a revisit of another power zone to the upper side. Smart money is to the downside, so I'm expecting a pullback to continue down. So we'll try to come come up and wait for my peers to send me some level of information. They're the ones doing the scalping today. So hopefully we get some new good numbers in it. And we'll check that out. In the meantime, let's just go into the E-mini S&P. What do we have? To the upper side, we got targets on the E-mini S&P. Markets mixed. So we got either targets or objectives. Target or objectives to the downside. All right. So, but to the upper side, we have resistance points at 2009.41, 2010.82, 2012.97, and a power zone at 14.75 to 15.15. Okay. That's what we got on the E-mini S&P to the upper side. I got a, a power level at 2010.82. What is a power level? Power level is when we confirm multiple times around the exact same number, we average out those number and we confirm those with smart money floating orders, okay? So I just typed in a couple questions on Skype to my mentors, <coughs> asking for their floating potential orders or what were they targeting. Uh, possibly their their intentions and if those numbers comes close enough to the calculations that we provide we come we then go back in time and uh, address that with prior support and resistance you can see here there is a resistance dual, dual resistance right there at 1050 and three pool top right there at 1050 so we average that out and 1082 became the number those, this is how we, uh, you know, reach those levels. Very powerful stuff. Nothing comes out of thin air. Everything is like triple, four times confirmed. Another power level is 20403. You can go back and see a double bottom formation. That's a resistance in here. Resistance, support, 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 and so on and so forth. All right. So 20403 uh, to 20287. That's another power level. I mean, power zone, so anything can happen in this area and market reverse it back up. All right. So those are the targets for the ES 200403, 20287, <clears throat> 20174. Potential target further down of 1998.76. Okay. Continue on. Just go into the Russell. Russell, we have, whoops, from Russell, we have, <coughs> let's see, a power zone at 1164.10, 1164.20 on the upper side, potential target 1165.50, smart money's to the upper side. You see these two arrows right here. I pull back down uh, to revisit 1159.80, 1159.0 uh, even and potential zone at 58.30 and 58.20 level right here. Then we have the low of the, of the last trading day. So we're kind of in range on all the markets. And take a look what happened on the last trading day. You see this uh, kind of uh, electrocardiogram kind of thing. Looks like a heart attack reading, isn't it? Anyways, um, yeah, that's actually what happened on the Russell last trading day. Lots of heart attacks. I mean, the market was not doing anything. Take a look at the difference on a trending market, you see? Kind of a swing, swing, swing. This is trending market. This is a heart attack market. So I might not be interested about going into it. But uh, when you see the comparison of the swings from the overnight session to the actual trading day, there's a big difference. It's more sustained. So... Hopefully something happens for those of you following the TF. All right, so to the upper side, once again, we got 1164.2010, 1165.50, 1166.70, and 67.80. Those are the targets to the upper side. We try to go for the green ones, are the most important ones. <coughs> All right, and then let's see, continue on. Yeah, we'll typically wait until 9.30. Oh, here we go. We got NASDAQ hitting one power level. I mean, yeah, absolutely power zone at all. So that's uh, 43.66.75 all the way to 68.49. So a typical strong reversal might happen from here. 
<clears throat> I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but it could be. Um, and then we got a midpoint at 4354.78 to 4353.86 to the downside. And potential further target towards the downside would be if they break the low, it's going to be 4347.94, 4346.53. Okay. 4346.50 is purple. Uh, in which one? To the downside. On Nasdaq. On Nasdaq. Okay, hold on. What, which one was it? 43.46.50. 46.50. It's purple? Yep. Change that. Thank you. Okay, great. <clears throat> Smart money up. And I got a purple up here at 43.77.43. So the market burst up, guys. That would be your targets on NASDAQ, 43.77.50 and 43.84.25. All right. So that covers pretty much the analysis of what we got. Once again, thank you, John Connor, for the levels. I mean, that's awesome. Great. Appreciate it. See, I love the members of our society here. It's just freaking awesome. All right. Yeah, it actually looks good. All right. So here we go. Let's see. CCS for the power zone on the TF. Sure, absolutely. We got 11.6410, 11.6420 to the upper side, and I have a power zone on the on the low side of 52. I mean 58.20 to 58.30 on in this area. You got it? All right. Sure. Absolutely. All right. Here's another, um, CC, here's another thought. Either way, up or down, don't try to go by the tick, all right? This is a guidance. So what, are, from where the, the your, your, where, what, from the opportunity of your entry, you, you might, you can measure from that point to the potential reversal point, how many points you might have, and then you gauge your objective of the day. Don't try to squeeze the whole thing out. <clears throat> it's just a personal, a personal recommendation for you, right? It said, for instance, let's just say that we're shorting right now. I'm just giving you a rough idea. They just say, okay, I, I'm going down. And then this is a potential reversal zone. Oh, that's 2.7 right there. All right, awesome. So you know what? I know for a fact that this is going to, this is going to be the trajectory they might have through the process of the morning. But my objective will be that if I go short here and I can get, I don't know, a point and a half, point seventy five, that will provide me with with my daily objective that I'm looking for. Awesome. That means that maybe I can target a fifty nine eighty because it's on it. It's in between the potential power zone and where the actual price is. So you can just um, prepare yourself as the market moves on. So don't. Uh, in other words, guys, it's not not. I'm not going direct to directly to anybody. It's just that this is part of who we who we are as trader. We tend to get greedy sometimes in terms of try to get the most out of the market. The market is not an ATM machine. And what we provide here is identify the potential levels here so we can have a gauge of, of, of an idea. All right, this is how much the market most likely will do. And from that distance, we prepare ourselves. Okay, if I can get this little bit of a chunk, then that's going to be awesome. Okay. <clears> Hope <throat> oh, that makes sense. All right, here we are. Carlos on oil, and forty-nine eighty-one is purple. Forty-nine eighty-one. Purple, you said. Yep. All right, awesome. Let's wait for that to happen, and if that actually goes in sync, we might wanna we might short it. We we're 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 bearish in this market. Take a look at the uh, of the zone bouncing from it. This is great. Only 15 ticks today of uh, average to range on a 10 minute chart, meaning for the last 25 minutes or so, the market's been ranging about 15 minutes. So I multiply that by 60% on average. Let's just do that all together. I'm just giving you my, my personal preferences sometimes. So let's just say 15 ticks times 60%. And that's as much 
uh, this is what I should be focusing on getting. So I can round that up to 10 ticks. Does that make sense to everybody? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, CC on oil with the typically that we've seen is 10 to 50, 10 to 20 10 to 20 but once again tr we don't try to max out but I'm going to show it to you here let me zoom in and you'll see what I mean all right by just what the market has done CC okay but just not come on this I'm, I'm not saying it let me show it demonstrate to you so we see here that we draw the 49.54 to 49.50. Everybody's right? Everybody's clear on that one, right? <clears throat> so that means that as soon as the market touched those levels, I can place a stop way below the zone. Actually, the zone is uh, right there uh, to 50, but I have, yes, I have a close, the close weather at 49, so I'm extending the, the zone to the 49 level. So that means that I can buy in the zone. This is a risky, no, it's not a risky. It's more aggressive trading, but it's less risky in reality. Look, let's just say, oh, it touched the zone right here, boom. Um, and I'm going for 10 to 20. So the market bounced back up all the way in here for 17 ticks. Then it touched again, and it bounced all the way up to 19 ticks. So anywhere from 10 to 20 is what they will provide. You, you, I'm not saying that it's, they're reversing the smart money. It's down. You see it right here. They're going down. So this is kind of trending. I rarely take these trades um, because typically they happen earlier in the stages, and we try to wait until you know uh, the, the market really opens and we can just see some uh, potential. So just imagine if by nine o'clock, which is the open of the pit of oil, of the oil market, imagine if by 9 a.m. opening, they're hitting one of those zones. Isn't that amazing? Because we know most likely they were going to try to break the zone, but they're going to reverse from it. And it's just a matter of buy and boom, and you, we're going to see an immediate bounce from it. it. It has happened maybe, I don't know, a couple times in a month. <clears throat> that when we have that sync in timing but uh, yeah it works pretty good all right let me just keep going here um, so we got a power level here at the 49.38 they're going for it. All right, the zone is no longer valid. You see, they're gone. That's gone. <coughs> Excuse me. Juan, can you find me another? Can you verify? Because I know the next one would be something like this. I just want to make sure you can find for me a tighter one because this might be the next zone. It's a 13. It's not that bad. It's just a, I think it's a 13 point or 12 points range, which is it's okay. It's acceptable. It's pretty similar to the top one. So I'm pretty sure this is what they're going for. 11, yeah. <clears throat> no, Dr. Dean, hello. <clears throat> no, 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 no trades. Uh, and as a reminder, uh, the reason that we're not taking any trades today so far, Dr. Dean, is because of the bank holidays and, and liquidity being thin. I just explained this to everybody here. And we got an, uh, the other thing is we got FOMC meetings speaking all across the time. I mean, this is going to be a crazy day, but it's going to be fun to trade on demo. So everybody should. Sh sh why don't we do this? Why don't we switch to demo accounts today? And we take some trades. Does that sounds like a press number number eight? If that sounds like a very fun part of it and learning how to trade the market without risking one cent, 
given the fact, once again, I'm not doing this for fun, is given the fact that it says here, why traders care? We care because the market is less, it has less liquidity and speculators become more dominant in the market influence, all right? Can lead to both abnormally low and abnormally high volatility. We don't wanna risk our money in this type of market where the market is all crazy. Does that make sense? But nevertheless, nevertheless, we can just participate on it. So as I mentioned to you, we can go here to your account, drop down, switch to Zim, and you're all good to go. Sounds good? And that way, I mean, where else we have the opportunity to practice our skill with our risk in the money in this type of days? That's what I'm saying. All right. So anyways, let's just try something up. Here it comes. Hold on. I'm going to switch to an ATM strategy that I have here. I'm click OK. I'm going to go to contracts. <clears throat> it would be, obviously, I'm in SIM. And I'm going to play it out this power zone here. I'm just curious if they touch it. That would be interesting. That would be very interesting. All right, power zones or power levels are levels that I can, I'm able to confirm more than three times, all right, from different three to four or five different sources. Okay, so when we, when we I mean, it's not 100% secure, but you will see many times when the market just touched them, an, an incredible amount of pressure mounting against the, in this case, the sellers, probably between 38 and 26 there's going to be a buyer. Now, where do we place, where should we place our uh, stop loss? Everybody, I mean the members here, I'm going to explain that to everybody. <coughs> where, no problem, Ari, absolutely. John, normally the liquidity on, on the oil market, we typically see the market in the 350,000 or so. But the point is that since there's no kind of uh, news driven situation going on, and there we got so many FOMC meetings speaking at the same times, uh, the market will could tend to go for the stop losses, get our stops, and we still being right in the trend. So we're in this case, the trend is down, and look, the market is being drifting downwards. <coughs> Slowly but steady. Here we go. Market got into the zone. And what time is it? It's nine o'clock. As I said, zone with nine o'clock. Does that sounds like a great opportunity? Let's see. We'll wait. Get in there, get in there. All right. <clears throat> we got the target at 26 as well, so I just want to make sure that in, they are indeed interested in <coughs> reversing. Five more minutes for the next 10 minute bar. Hold on. Kyra, that's our own proprietary way of uh, doing the analysis. All right, here we go. And I'm probably gonna consider this a <clears throat> in the next five minutes. Still five minutes left to come. Give me one. 
All right, once again, this oh, I am not, um, this is paper trading, and I'm going with two contracts <coughs> on paper trading. Oh, there you go. You see the dip that I was looking for? That's what I, that's exactly what I was expecting, which is awesome. All right, guys, keep going. So I have a 49.41 so far, 49.41. There you go. Let's see if they reach this level here. <clears throat> and we're trying to play it out the zone, okay? This is a, a playing out the zone. I'm waiting for the precise momentum here. And what we're going to try to do is uh, try to go for 10 ticks to 20. That would be, yep, that 49 right there. <clears throat> I'm on a 10 minute chart. Okay, here we go. Looks like a good opportunity from going long right here. I just place my entry point. My stop is going to be on the pivot low right there. And uh, how many points should we go for? Greg, this is uh, I'm trading a demo because I I was clear everybody's clear enough that we're doing demo today to demonstrate the power of the techniques due to the fact of the liquidity and volatility of the market today. Is everybody clear on that? Oh, okay. All right. Just want to make sure. <clears throat> Yes, John. Yeah, just like I'm doing right now. You see, this would be a trade setup, just like I'm doing right now. So here we go. I'm going to go for 10 ticks. I got 39. I go with 49 because I'm rejecting the zone, right? <laughs> Juan, can you, can you identify a bullish target here? Which is actually this good, is the one we're going to be waiting for selling it. There you go. So there, were, that's um, the zone power. Uh, the zone doing its thing. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Well, honestly, fifty-six. Fifty-six. <clears throat> mm, the open is about to happen. Placing my stop. Uh, let's see. Two ticks below. The zone, the bottom of my my zone right here, all right. That's 49.26, and I'll let it go. <clears throat> it should be a good one. Let's see. 48, so 57, 56. <clears throat> I don't know if it's going to happen or not. to break 43 level give me the 43 but once again let me bring up again so you can be clear on what's going on forex <clears throat> factory guys this is important <clears throat> so you can understand why we're doing demo today go all right it's nine already yeah it's nine let's see if they take our stop or it holds where it is <clears throat> um <clears throat> okay <clears throat> 
it says when there's less uh, liquidity into the market guys check what it says here speculator becomes more dominant meaning floor traders right so they typically tend to go for the stops okay that's but the, our only benefits is you know we most likely we, where is it that they, they will reverse isn't that amazing and then this can lead to both abnormal low and abnormal high volatility so that's a reason they would, this would, for me, this will count to become the most aggressive, best trading setup. And why would you say that, Carlos? Well, because I have an idea where most likely they were bounced from. Take a look at that. We almost got stopped out. We already knew where the low of that part was because we confirmed those levels, 49.26, becoming one of the targets to the downside. We never had a chance to short it because the market was on a downtrend, okay? They never pulled back where I wanted it to. So I have to go into the aggressive reversal pattern, which is then buying the word most likely they will reverse. I still need to wait for the market to pull back up so I can consider the sell. Since they already reached my targets, my targets become what? Reversal levels. And here you go. This is demonstrated live. Yes, it is on a demo. I have to admit, we said that we said that in the beginning. But this is the power of the zone. We had an earlier zone today, right, over here, and that zone did provide, what, about 19 ticks, right? right? <clears throat> In this case, the targets are 49 and 56. <clears throat> we might probably go, hold on. Mark, 81. 81? <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, that might take a while, but yes. I got 88 over here again. We got 81. <clears throat> it's a purple level. Yeah. So let's see. We we'll just wait. Let's see what's going to happen. Remember, there's no liquidity. I mean, there's. There's no volatility in the market. It's bank holiday. There's, you know, it's crazy stuff. So our best bet is to be able to become counter trend traders today on those levels. Will it work? I have no idea. The idea here is that uh, the analogy, just so you know, is the market is coming down, pull back and coming down. The most logical thing, they have to pull back then to continue down. Am I right, guys? So this pullbacks. This pattern of repetition on pullback is what I'm expecting right now on this area that we were able to calculate because this is what we're good at. So the most logical pattern is wait for the precise moment to reverse and wait for that pullback to happen. We're ready for three points and we missed to be stepped out by one tick. I mean, we really know where to place our levels and how to place the stops. But nevertheless, we need to use stops. Don't you ever trade without a stop, guys. This is impossible. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Let's see. <clears throat> Let me clear this up. And that would be very interesting today. <clears throat> Nothing happening on the stock market yet, except uh, Nasdaq is still holding on the zone right there on the top. Come on, guys, give me those 10 ticks. <clears throat> Uh, Steen, we're trading oil, CL, it's oil, November contract, 2015. <clears throat> Nick, we, we created, this is something, this is our way of doing things. We don't teach that in, in the trade room. We, this is not a teaching room, although I do teach price action. I think most of the member will vouch they probably learned pretty much a lot of, little bit of uh, powerful nuggets in the time. No, oh, no problem, Robert. <clears throat> no, no, we're not trading gold. Honestly, we uh, I I I stopped trading gold. I I was doing the analysis, but it's just barely anybody was trading gold, nor 
YM, so we stopped doing those analyses. All right, so let's just go by time and price. It's 9.05, uh, <clears throat> four more minutes on the next 10 minute bar. Depending on the opening of that bar, I will move my stop to probably 49.35. Actually, I can move it to 49.35 now, risking only four ticks. Okay, there's no need <clears throat> at all. There's no need at all for me to live this uh, where it is. Okay, no logical point I'm doing so right now because we're bearish. We're supposed to go down. I'm expecting the market to finish that uh, 10 ticks move. <clears throat> and I'll go over some questions afterward, guys. Let me just do the analysis here. I'm just, just trading it as it is. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. I did went on with my real contract, with my real account right there. So bear with me. I need to be safe with you guys so you don't have to follow me. I'm going to break that. 46. <clears throat> That's a tick. I'm going to move my stop to one tick profit. I'm going to let it go. No risk involved into this trade. Did you follow through? All right. <clears throat> is everybody clear? This is how we trade. This is how we trade today. Yes, we're trading demo because of the volatility, all right, for those of you who got in a little bit late. <clears throat> all right, uh, NASDAQ just broke the new levels here of the zone, so that means the next most the next most logical aspect of potential reach is gonna be 43.77. I don't know if they're gonna reach it fast, slow, or what is it that they're going to do, but that's basically the next level up. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. <clears throat> Very slow day. Can you see these guys? Hey, Williams, what's up? Yeah, I'll go over a few things later on. TJ, I might, yes. I just not, I just want to make sure, all right, I'm out, and that's it. We're done. Okay, so that was a, this is how we play the, the zone, all right? That's a demonstration on how we play the zone. All right. It doesn't mean that they're probably not going to pull back up. I can't go any, I can't place any trades right now. I still need a pullback. So I'm pretty sure they will probably do so. But I just wanted to give you a, a live demonstration on how playing the zone will, will go for. <clears throat> so, yeah, exactly. It's a slow moving day. <coughs> Uh, I'll ask Morning Carlos. Just wondering if it may be possible to contact Dr. Dean. Dr. Dean is in the house, actually. You can just write there uh, on Chatsy, type anything to him, and I think he's uh, he probably could uh, reply to you. Simmons, we trade only the mornings, pretty much until 9, 9.30. By, 
9.30 to 9.45, we're typically done on the day. And today is a little slow day, but I'm going to take uh, the advantage. I just wanted to create this live trip to you guys so you can see everything, you know, uh, in reality, how it works out in real time. Although I was clear enough that this was a, it should be a, a demo um, demo account, right? <clears throat> Um, just because of the fact, as we explained before, the volatility of the market today is just not a, that that good. Okay. <clears throat> William, we just reached the, the targets that I had to the downside. If you notice here, those were my targets to the downside. I still have one more left of 49.17. <clears throat> But the targets were reached before doing a pullback. So now there's no more trades other than waiting for the market to pull back up towards the levels of the 81, 88, 14, 25 or so. That's what I'm expecting. The price is a pull back up, and then I'll probably look for a potential sell setup there. <clears throat> But that will be on the fly. Obviously, today I'm not going to be trading it because it's just not trading. Now, another rule of engagement here when we trade um, price action activity, um, <clears throat> what can I expect from the market? I noticed that the market went down here, make this low, <clears throat> this here, but this low did not took the prior low here, all right? So that might lead into kind of a... a, a um, a um, little bit of an uh, idea that the market most likely is not allowing the prices to go any further down. So this downward move might be reaching an end. Price action is telling me that they're rejecting prior lows. <clears throat> and that is very important for us to know. All right. So meaning if we go short, should I short? No. The market is already on a very oversold conditions. All right, we need a pullback to short the market and retest the lows. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Robert, um, you can contact, you can send the email to carlos at tradingmission.com. <clears throat> TJ, um, no, I don't think so. I don't know. You gotta, you gotta ask him. He's just, he, he just visiting here. He's just reviewing us for quite a, some time. <clears throat> All right. So let me go again. Looks like these guys are rejecting the end of it. <clears throat> All right, so it would be forty eight. Yeah, I might be a buyer at forty eight. One tick higher. Still fine into <clears throat> Second guys, we're doing our stuff here. 
what would be the difference? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Juan, can you verify 49.57 for me? One second. I got 4957 going long at 49. I'm doing demos. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. All right, just, just so you know, I'm just keep trading as it is. But today is one of those days that I don't feel comfortable taking, risking our money. Because as you can see, it's just barely moving, barely moving. But I'm long. You got to confirm. All right, so I will be a buyer at 40. 49 <clears throat> and I have a target at 57 and then we have 85 <clears throat> and the purple at 81 still so let's see how that works out Fifty-seven. Mm. Ah, my pleasure, Robert. <clears throat> William, thank you. Yeah, it's clean. I mean, with the exceptions of the levels, but uh, yeah, I need to have all those in there. Yeah, I mean, you guys, are, we don't need a boatload of uh, indicators. I mean, just price action itself will help you. There you go. We're in. There you go. So my le my first target is, uh, what, the 10 ticks. And then what was the price again? 50 what? 7. 57, right? Well, we need another level. <clears throat> uh, Sixty-two. So the next one is 62. I'll go with the 62 and then the 81. Let's see how that works. Um, let's see how this uh, evolves. Once again, I've been, I'm on demo. <coughs> Uh, I'll go into the questions in a moment, guys. Please bear with me. can deal with all this questions and trading at the same time. So, uh, 30. I need to break. Okay. Beyond 30 will give me the next level. Oh, I got confirmation one. Yes, for the 61. Confirmed. Yeah. <clears throat> looks good so I need to break the all right this is where they're having a lot of trouble the 30 they broke it they're going for it any moment now there you go good boys give me that 61 target is 62 so give me 61 And then 81 it would be 85, 73, uh, 40, Juan, can you confirm 49.85 <clears throat> for me? Yep, I have it. Okay, good. Thank you. And I got 88. 
All right, so we're good to go. Come on, guys. <clears throat> so going for 10 ticks. Uh, actually, uh, 62 is the immediate target. So we go for 61, one tick below. And then we had this since early in the morning, that 49881. We got confirmation at 85. That means that 81 might be able to get reached. Let's see that plays out. But this is a typical trade that we do. Once again, I'm trading demo. Why? If you're new here, because the volatility today was not that simple. All right, so I'm look, moving my stop to break even point. This is a free ride. 49.51, I got that on autopilot. Once it moved 10 ticks, I moved my tick, my stop to one tick profit, no risk, acknowledge. You see how that works, guys? <clears throat> <clears throat> Here we go. Waiting. Now there's no risk. Everybody's following, yes or no? I mean, one thing is to show you, hey, this is what I did, uh, or, hey, look, I did gazillion ticks, or gazillion, no, my, I, I mean, come on. Even though that, yeah, I acknowledge, even though that today I openly says I'd rather go in a demo account just to trade, but still trade as it is true, isn't that beat the crap out of showing you before it happens? Is One thing is to show you once it's done, and the other thing is have the guts to say, no, this is what's going to happen. And I think that's the, that's the key. Everybody, including us, when we try to hone our own skills, we have to make it accountable, the decisions that we make. And it's not to show off anybody. I mean, it's here to make money. We're here to make money, not risk money. Whether that works or not, it makes you accountable for the decisions and the analysis that you're doing. I, I don't know if that makes sense or not to you guys. But uh, for me, that's that's what that was my tipping point of taking me from an average trader to a very consistent trader, not a huge successful. I'm not saying that I'm making multi-millions, but I, I really hone the skills in terms of my decision making so I know that my objective could be reached every single day. I don't know what your objective is. My personal objective is to make at least 40 ticks per contract every day, whether that take me one trade or whether that take me five trades. Does that make sense? All right. <clears throat> and I, if you walk up today here, uh, just imagine yourself in control of your emotions when you have a clear path of understanding what the market should be doing and you follow through your own set of rules. Um, by the way, I, 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 let me just bring that over. <clears throat> I have them here on the sticky note. Let me show it to you. I always have, never change them. All right, well, I'm about to get my, my target. Boom, first target is hit. Now I move the trailing stop. Hold on. I move my trailing stop to locked in. Uh, let's see, let's just locked in five ticks. Boom. The worst case scenario is five ticks, and I already got my 11 ticks. Next level up is the target of 81. We talked about this earlier today in the morning, and that will be the next step, 81. Actually, there's supposed to be a in-between point, isn't it? Uh, hold on. I, there is a, I, there is an in-between point. Actually, it's 75. <clears throat> 75. Where is it? It's right here. Let me mark that so I, I can I have an idea that I might have another hurdle at 75 right there. It's important for me to know where my problems are going to be encounter. <clears throat> so let's see if I get stepped out on my trailing stop. Guys, we're on a selling mode. Uh, this is a downtrend market. Smart money, it's down. We should not be buying. But why did you bought? Well, I bought because the market bounced off my power zone. You see how that works? Irene, Irene, I mean, come on. I mean, 
if that's a problem on the, on on the on the demo accounts that's a huge problem on demo accounts for a lot of people they don't treat it like if, if it is a real trading account all right <clears throat> okay i openly says i openly said here everybody should be on trading account for the reason that i stated earlier is everybody clear on that one Oh, okay. Yep. Don't say it. Irene, nobody has to know about what you're doing. This is for your own good. No, everybody else do. Nobody else pays your bills. You are the one who pays your bills. So don't show this to anybody. I mean, you can show it to us here on the members, but uh, because we know what we're doing. But I mean, you know how many years I spend on demo accounts? It's ridiculous. But truth be told, is the only way to hone the skills, right? Well, I will openly say that I did trade this in on my real account right there. <laughs> but I show it to you here because I know 90% or 95% of you typically do whatever what, whatever I do. Since I don't want to get anybody in harm's way, that's that's the reason I went openly said we go into demo. All right? Your safety is first with us. We're not here to risk money. We're here to make the right judgment and trade. Uh, emo try to trade with the less emotion as possible. 100% mechanical, 100% objective, right? So I'm trading to make money. In my case, I'm, I'm building wealth. So I have other source of incomes as well. So on my trading, I try to trade. I take only 30% of what I make on my trading and take it out of my, my account. Typically, usually it's 50%, but 30%, and try to leave the remaining one for one year, just like a hedge fund, and reinvest it back into the pot, right? Into my trading uh, uh, account. All right, I'm gonna have a specific daily objective. I just told you that I look for 40 ticks every single day, whether being one or multiple trades, for me to pull that up. And I always follow a detailed trading plan. You saw it live here in front of you my decision making and what we should focus on. Next, I treat with money that I can afford to lose and I follow the plan to perfection. If it doesn't pan out, I just plain and simple switch or don't do anything else. Rebound from your losses every time that you take a trade, just don't take it personal. It's just a matter of the, you know, that's the, the, how the market works, all right? Now, then you become an expert in your market, all right? In my market, in this case, the oil, and Amini, we become an expert by understanding their behavior, timing, um, average moves, what happened, which news react in certain ways. Just like today, we have multiple FOMC meetings speaking, uh, bank holiday on the house as well today, meaning liquidity just crazy, so we should be not trading at all. Nevertheless, we took the opportunity today, even in this condition of markets, how powerful our opportunities are by knowing exactly what to expect from the market, in this case, from the levels that we provided. And the reason I took the opportunity to do so is was because, as I mentioned earlier this morning, remember when I, everybody press number 11. If you remember when I said, could you imagine if by by nine o'clock, the market will be on a, on a power zone? Everybody, who remembers when I said that? Or you can just, say that I'm a liar here. I don't care. Yeah, right? <clears throat> so I was up ahead about a 45 minutes before, an hour before I said, imagine if the market will hit the zone, one of the zones, by 9 a.m. And look, 9 a.m., that's the zone. How many points would the market typically will move from the zone? I mentioned it. And it was, boom, 10 to 20. The market just moved right now, 26. Isn't that powerful? Dr. Dean got five ticks. <laughs> I know you do. Trade off uh, the 18 plus 18 entry. There you go. Looking for 18 on the second as well. Awesome stuff. <clears throat> and you saw when we place a trade, where do we place our stop? at the bottom of the zone, minus two to five, possibly even 15, 10 to 15, but I like to go, this is the absolute bottom that I should expect. If they break that and close below, they're reversing. 
So I'm not willing to risk more than maybe two to four, maybe five ticks below the actual low of the zone. We did that. We almost got stopped out, but it was the perfect positioning of our stop. Didn't get stopped out. The market reversed and continue on on the tendency that we expected from the zone. But we're still on the bearish mode. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Wow, this would be the cue. That was the cue to go short sure, right there, right? 46? Yep. Actually, 45. 45. I had 45. Okay. But I don't like it. These guys are, yeah, these guys are just turning. They haven't actually pulled back what they're supposed to. For some reason, I don't know what's going on, but let's see. Bottom is low today. Yeah, they're having trouble. Here's a double bottom. Here's a support. Yeah, this is a problem area. I got it. It's right here. There you go. You see it? <clears throat> so this is support, 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 support. So this is a very problematic area for us to see it. Nevertheless, the 45 was the cue to go short again. What would be the target in this one to the downside one? If they break this hurdle. 23. <clears throat> That's the first target. 23 is the visit yeah. of the low. Okay, and beyond yeah. that, be, beyond the 49.17? <clears throat> 11. It's too tight. I don't like it. All right, nevertheless. Yeah, you see, they're too tight, too close to each other. So this guy has to bounce back up again. There's no, even though the smart money's down, I don't feel, I don't feel the cue here. These guys are... Are going down any further yeah I see it as a triple bottom formation so they rejected that previous low yeah there's uh, this is a no trading activity anyways so that was a great trade right there bouncing up after that I have 4892 purple 4892 <clears throat> actually 93 4893 There you go I'll leave it there all right guys so to finish here if you're in doubt don't make any trades like in today we're in doubt yeah I'm in doubt there's too many FOMC meetings speaking the mark the bank holiday the I mean the liquidity was not as I would love to see it so I rather not trade at all but if I have the urge switch to demo account and practice it never hurts never hurts to trade on demo accounts okay but you have to treat it as a real trade don't go with a mentality that since it is fake money, oh, I'm going to risk a gazillion contracts. Don't. Treat it as it is. Come on. And you're responsible for your own trades. Always be positive and always create a trading journal. All right? So, right? So we win and we will lose sometimes. All right, guys? So that's, um, you see, this is a sticky note that I always have on my computer so I can follow through my own rules of engagements how that really works for you guys. All right, let me just uh, go here and check this out. Take a look, the power level on the Russell. Let me go back. You see here, everybody following Russell, press number eight if you've been following Russell. Here comes the sell setup. Sell off of the E of the oil. A lot of hurdles right there. All right, <clears throat> take a look at the power zone, reversal on Russell, 1164 to 1163 by the tick, guys. Isn't that amazing? Although I don't know, don't trade it. Take a look how we call that power zone right there. Boom. Now they're going for the 11, for what? The 1158, 58, 10 to 58, 20. But we got a support in the mid, in the mid turn of 59. 80 and 59 even 5980 to 59 even and then the power zone we'll check that out but that was pretty amazing that zone right there let's see what else we have we got the nasdaq overshot a little bit the zone right there but once again we call the zone the reversal right there and the market's coming back down they might visit the 4355 to 53 all right, here's a new low on the oil. Now these guys are selling like crazy. <clears throat> 
Pretty interesting. The first level of targeting uh, that one provided of 49.11 was reached, and the last one is going to be 48.93. Can eliminate this already. Can I eliminate this? Well, I can keep that one just like this because it held right there. <clears throat> And support turns into resistance. So let's see if the next level down should be go for 48.93 to 93, as one calls it. Russell is about to hit the zone. Look at that. Awesome stuff. And E mini just hit the power reversal zone right there, as we called it at 2004, right at, right on track at 9:30. 9:30. As you can see, guys, this is a, I know it's a lot to take, but it's good to show you before it happens, so you can see with your own eyes when they happen. So you see those levels. So we got the power zone here. So I got a. I'm really uh, Nasdaq. It looks like uh, 47.75 to 46.53 could be the one. The e mini are bearish now. They need to break that uh, the power zone right there. Nasdaq. I mean Russell just hit the zone on the down cycle. You see this from zone to zone. Boom. You see it, guys. See how powerful those levels are? Pretty interesting, right? I love it. when, when, when I, Although I'm not trading this account, it's awesome to call them up front and see them happening. All right. So here comes the NASDAQ. Oil just dropped like a tank. You see that? Everything. Take a look. That's part. Great job, Juan. In 93. <clears throat> yep. Level just reached. So that was a great call right there. Great, great stuff. Smart money down. The entry was supposed to be 95, you said? No, 45. 45. All right, my, my entry was 45. All right, let me type that down in there. Yeah. Yeah, we did not take it once again because of the fact of today's market activity, but it's good, great to follow through before they happen, guys. And that would be the end of the trading for us. It would have been this buy setup right here, and we called it. That was a great. And the next setup would have been that, I mean, 45 sell, but we didn't take it, obviously, because of the fact of what we're talking about. But nevertheless, we continue on providing the levels and just to see how they react. Okay, <clears throat> so that would be, let's see, what would be, what would be the case of this? 8.33 and a 52 tick move. Great job in there. <sighs> All of these guys are bouncing of the levels that we called that up front. Oh, we missed this one by what? By one tick. All right. Oh, I'm done. <clears throat> ES is bouncing up the level. 403, 2404 even, obviously. 2002.75, it's going to be this one right there. That's an ES. These guys are... Take a look at this chart sideways. Crazy. He has a scoot for. I don't like the. Yep. Let's see how these guys bounce from those levels. Okay. 
it's mixed in the low soil. And that's ex-bullish. Here's a power level doing its thing. Once again, let's see if you've been following us. How many points do we typically see on any one of those power levels being rejected from? <clears throat> Alan, now up 42 per contract and done. There you go. There you go. All right, let's just, uh, anybody uh, Anybody took the trade setups? Let me see, let me put it in here. Um, I have one member asking me, what is the benefit? What benefit should I expect from the membership? John asked, John Handel asked, what benefit should I expect from the membership? Anybody care to... Please, members, um, if you care to share with Mr. John Handel from your own words, your own benefits. How what how how beneficial are um, would be? Take a look at the bounce level. One awesome trade. Yep. That was great. You see that those levels. How many points do we expect from the zones? Anybody? Here we go. 10 to 20, right? Let's see. Obviously, the stop is going to be two, three. I will say a few ticks below. That's a four-point risk. And the market just gave 12 ticks and 15 ticks. So 10 to 20, that would be great. There you go, TD. Uh, Robert says, guys, yes, it's. A, it, I don't want to test. I don't want to be the one sharing this. I need you guys to share. If you're if you're caring enough to, uh, there's a uh, 280 people in here today, and and they're typically I, I probably are a little bit overwhelmed of the information, and I apologize in advance if that this became a little bit overwhelmed. Um, but I try to be very open, transparent, and honest with everybody at the same time. But it's a um, it's a uh, it's an incredible, amazing journey that. Uh, we have done for the last uh, year and a half, all right? And um, you you get to learn so much stuff and gauge judgment of the market, price action activity, that, that I do teach. I don't teach my methodology. I do open up every other month or so um, to provide that type of trading or, uh, or coaching. And there's a lot of people here who has taken the, the inner circle, of course. But um, but the, yeah, you 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 have an incredible opportunity to learn and profit at the same time. Okay, it says. Christine says I have a whole different mental attitude about trading because since joining Carlos crew, I have been consistently profitable, roughly six percent per month. There you go, there you go. Thank you, Christine. Six percent per month. That's awesome. I don't know your broker platform, but in some you can put both contracts up with a column that shows beat as or your broker. Oh, to Joseph. All right, got it. Um, Dr. Dean, wonderful trade, friendly support environments, storehouse and knowledge. Thank you, Dr. Dean. Yeah, awesome. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is not. Once again, I might feel the. I, I can have. I can feel the vibe that probably it might be. Uh, in my oh, I missed that cell setup, man. I'm sorry, guys. Today's results plus one plus one plus ten plus ten. My shirt plus ten. There you go. Thank you, Christine. Did anybody got the short position? Next level down should be 45.55 to 59. I'm 
mark that in there just so you know I know some of you are actually trading this break 19 ticks there you go anybody else took the trades Guys, if you're being with us for more than three or four months, if you care to share, that would be very rewarding for all of us. And there's a lot of people here uh, visiting us for the first time trying to figure it out. No, no, Jagger, we're not. Three times 23, I'm sorry, three minus 13, second plus 15. 15 total. There you go, Dr. Dean. Thank you. Irene says, I'm new. My first time here, and I really like it. Thank you, Irene, for your words. Yeah, we still got tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow is going to be, uh, um, we're probably going to have a great trading day, hopefully. I don't know. It depends on the market. No problem. Yeah, great job. Good luck with the Forex. That will be awesome. Dr. Dean, plus 30 total. Great job. Now, Sue, I think Sue might have taken a few days, a few days, a few months off. Thank you, Dr. Dean. Awesome. Here we go. We're going for it. I'm going to bring in the questions from, so I can read the questions from GoToWebinar. All right, I'm here, guys. One second. Here we go. Let's see. It's a lot of them. All right, Robert says, being, a few live, being to a few live rooms, you are one of the best crude oil with crudes. Thank, thank you, Robert. Thank you. Um, let's see what else we got. How do we identify a power zone? That's our, we do that, as I explained, we, that's our own proprietary way of doing it. And I also ask for smart money levels so we can compare those and, you know, trade effectively. TD says, I'm seeing downward. Okay. All right. Um, I'll make 26 ticks today. What charts do you use? I use 10 minute charts and one hour charts to do the analysis. Do you trade all day? No, I only trade in the morning. We are going south, yes. How do I contact on the five-week trial, Robert? You can just email us at carlos at tradingmission.com. Could we put food and some price action? Yeah, you can use anything you want as long as it works for you. Thanks for teaching me that bank holidays will affect oil, definitely. 
Uh, Chris got 40 ticks cool. Shorting the thrust, yep. Great sense of trend, John Anderson, I think it is. Uh, William Ross, can you get Jimmy to send details of the charting company you use? All right. Steve, do you only trade during uh, room hours to make your daily goals? I have been in a room where the guys running the room will claim to make his daily goal, but was trading before and after. No, which only trade in... Uh, Steve, what you see here is what you get. We trade in the morning and that's it. We try to go for uh, 10 ticks a day and that's it. William says it. We should call this a magic circle. <laughs> I like that one. But the trend. So Steve, once again, we trade uh, pretty much in the morning one to two good trades, and that's it. If we lose, we try to recoup the from the losses up to three times, and we're just if not, then we just let it go. No trades. Marlene, that was a good kind of trend. Very good. Uh, please tell us the benefit of the membership. We already covered that. Tell us what benefits should I expect from the membership, John? Uh, you're going to learn a lot, and you can, I mean, although I don't teach my, my strategies, I do teach about price action and uh, psychology of trading when taking positions and, and when to trade and when not to trade, okay? Uh, knowledge that the person asking does not have. There you go. To learn how to trade as a pro, William says, knowledge, experience. Did the first year counter trend hit target? Uh, I don't remember. No, no, I don't. Yeah, it did eventually. Yes, my mistake, Devin. Yes, it did. I just got out by trailing my stop. From what I can see, I'm not a member yet. You set your targets and take no risk. When nothing is there, I will be joining soon. Absolutely. Um... To lead the lifestyle, oh, it's got a high flyer. <laughs> I don't think so. Thank you, William. 18 ticks for John in paper. Awesome. That's all that matters. What are your fees? We charge 297 where we provide it per month, but we provide a five week uh, for the cost of one month. So you get one extra week because we try to encourage everybody to paper trade us for one week first. How the two down barrel are constructed. Uh, these are our own proprietary indicators. All right, that's the only thing that I use. If the downward just doesn't still working on that. How should I determine entry levels? Do you open you up? Uh, do you teach how you find the zones? We do on the inner circle. That's a course that we open every other month or so. But that doesn't. I mean, you you'll get notified on that. I don't promote that in here. All right, I mean, we're concentrating here on, on trading and pretty much that's it. Robert says we learn discipline, discipline, discipline. This is perfect. William Ross, is it possible you put your personal trading rules as text on your site so that I can print it? Yes, sir. There you go. Take the opportunity and print them out. That sounds good. Yes, we will be trading tomorrow, uh, and that's going to be the second uh, day for you guys. So yeah, my bro, I used um, Ninja Traders and I used Lakefront Futures with uh, another charting platform, which is Multi Charts. So I got those two. All right, let me go over here. Ricky, uh, we're going to be, I am going, to, uh, this has been recorded, it's a long one. I will put it on, on probably on YouTube. And yeah, you're more than, more than welcome to see it. 
I'll talk to to uh, my to the guys. Um, the guys, they are um, in charge of all that stuff. I am um, besides Ninja. Matthias, thank you, Matthias. Uh, Mind you, eleven on demo today. Awesome. Kevin, ten in total. Awesome. You guys are awesome. Corsima, I'll see you tomorrow. That's great. What do you think, guys? What do you think today so far? You like it? If you're visiting for the first time, if you're visiting for the first time, can you share with us, please? What is your initial, I mean, the first impression is the one that counts, and I know we probably didn't do much today, but if you, if you're, if you have a, a, a reference in point, right, from other traders and everything, can you share? I would like to actually know what the first impressions has been so far. Uh, very impressive, very good. I would need you watch again, video again. I'm new. Absolutely. Yep, that's a that's a definitely that's very uh, intelligent from your part, Daniel. I was rejected by Lake from Futures, but have an account of Global Futures. All right. Yeah, that depending on where you live, John. Make good money on demo. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> hey Mo. Uh, I'm new here. I want to understand your trading strategy. I know it's your in, it's your indicator, but it's still don't understand your trades. Entry strategy. Can you please explain? Z? Yeah, absolutely. Basically, uh, here's how it works. That's a good question. Let me go over that. All right. So today, the smart money was going down. And I have these two arrows here just to give me a visual representation. Where should I focus my trading today? But today we made a decision not to trade real accounts or not trade at all just because of the fact that the bank holiday. I, I mean, it sounds like a broken record, but that was that was the key. So basically, what I explained earlier, I focused that my efforts in those in that moment just to be clear enough and explain to you when ha what happened and what type of trades we can see when we see the prices hitting those power zones levels. This is not the trade that we do every day because it's rarely when we see the market hitting those power zones it just if it just happens today which is great for you to see that we had the levels created today right today beforehand so i took the opportunity to show you how the market react towards those levels so today was amazing in, in those terms but we were looking for a seller everybody agree on that does everybody Remember that that today since the morning we were focusing on becoming a seller, right? So we need it, and then I mentioned that I took my. Remember, this has been recorded. I, I'm not coming up uh, with this out of thin air. I've been. I, I'm gonna. I'm saying this because I hate when people say this is what I said. This is what I said. When in reality, maybe they didn't. But I I, I come up with my my drawing tool and I said I'm expecting a pullback to continue to the downside I remember that so that that's my type of trading I was expecting a pullback and then we were created a zone or if the, the zone was higher actually but in this case we would have had an entry point at 45 that would the key when I asked one I saw a cell setup I was not following it but I saw the cell setup and I asked and it was 45 all right that was a cue to go short after the pullback and after the pullback one call up the 4911 and 49 4893 press number six if you guys are in accordance of what I'm saying here in the order of sequence we were talking about the zone and playing explaining the opportunity on demo how to play a counter trend move when the song happens because it was awesome to see the markets doing so before that I explained imagine if by 9 a.m. if we can see prices hitting the zone and that's actually what it happened I guess the the, um, the secret really works law of attraction anyways 
That was a nine and that worked out. So we focus on that type of a scenario today. That worked out. Now, that the real trading happens on at, the real trading happens after the pullback. So here's a pullback. And the entry would have been 45 to be precise. And that would be right in there. And this bar right there. Let me just put it like that. And our our target or our objective to the downside would have been would have been from here to um, that one right there, 49.11. These are the targets to the downside. Those are targets. But before the targets, we had kind of hurdles, meaning supports, and we we, we, we would have been able to cover that eventually. But these are the targets, 49.11, 48.93, and that's exactly what typically the market just did. And then this last one right there, 48.55 that they just reached. All right, uh, that I, we, we call it earlier today. Uh, Robert says, much more than I expected for a holiday. I like that you take no chances when nothing is there. I'm usually a bond trader, but now much more interested in oil. Thank you for the first aid. Absolutely. William says, brilliant colors. Thank you. All right. John says, I'm interested. Absolutely, guys. We're trying to create a, a real powerful, high-level traders community here. I mean... I know we provide those levels, but what we try to attract is this highly knowledgeable traders. We can help each other uh, 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 become better as a unified membership. I don't know. This is something that I rarely could have been able to find out there. I, I, I found good trade setups. I, I found amazing great trade rooms, but it's just kind of a lonely place. <clears throat> and there was no objective in place. It was more of a... Um, trade as you go and crazy stuff until you get tired of it or something like that. We try to, um, what I try to do is impart what I learned from my hedge fund managers, uh, mentors, and they teach me and I, what I try to, to create, recreate on a very tiny scale is how can I copy the hedge fund managers on my own level? So I, I need to, first thing, I need to be contra uh, a contradictory trader if I'm saying that right. Um, I, I have to have the levels correctly before it happens, preferably before the market opens. I must know where are the, the most important rejection levels. This is what they do. Um, I must focus on a daily objective, get in, get out. If it is a percentage-wise percentage, if it is money, it's on, it's on your own. But do not deviate from that. If, you make, if you're looking for uh, 12 ticks, 12 ticks reach, close your positions and you're done. Don't try to get greedy into the market and make it systematically as no, make it as systematically as possible so your emotions don't get into the trade. Does that make sense? You see, ask what kind of stop loss do you use? See, that depends on the stop. Here's an example. All right, let me go over. Press number press press yes is here if you're paying attention to the charts right now because I want to make sure that everybody clears this, is how to place a stop with us. Yep, everybody, yep, all right. All right, here's here's the thing. Let me try to recreate. I mean, I don't like to do this stuff, but anyways. Okay, here's a pullback. Here's a pullback, right? All right, and this is a 10-minute chart. I love 10-minute charts. The, the chart closes at 49.53, and we had an entry of the break of uh, 49. 45, but that break has to be confirmed with all the stuff that we have. And it was in this in reality it was confirmed between 46 and 45. So we got failed at 45. So that was that was the entry. 45. Right? Awesome. Where should we place our stop? Price action, guys. What does the mark what does the market is telling us right now that they rejected most recently? The 68. Does that make sense? So that means that I can take I can take um the 68 plus, I would say, um, 68 plus, let's see, one, two, 
let's just say five ticks, 73. So that would be my initial stop. Does that make sense? The high, a couple of ticks above the previous high that they left behind. Make sense? So that price action Z, I think Z was the one. Yes, what kind of stop do you have? This is how we place a stop, based on price action. We got in, we use a price action to tell us where to place our stop, and this is where the stop should be. Does that work for everybody? Very simple, straightforward. Use a price action to tell us where to place our stop. You see me, I mean, you saw me. Everybody saw the buy on the zone, and I placed my stop right below the zone before the market tested it. It was below the zone, but I knew that I should not go for the 26 because that's the level they're going for. So it doesn't make sense for me to place it right there. They're telling me, based on my, my and the way that we calculate the level, this is where we're going. Well, put it away from that. So I put it about five, two or four or five ticks, and we missed it by one tick. That was awesome, by the way. And you go. And the um, market rejected as uh, we expected. Okay. So this is how we play it every day, by price action, guys. Now, and I know there's a lot of great systems and a lot of great indicators and everything. Believe me, I have them all. I have them all. I invested a lot of money on all of them. I like many of them. I don't like most of them. But what brings a bread and butter every single day is focusing on the main trend. Think about it, guys. Isn't this a perfect scenario? If you know, if you know the trend of the day, does this make sense? Give me a second. Does this make sense? Hey, if I know the trend where the market is going, and if I know most likely where they are going to head to, meaning the targets, and if I know based on the charts where to place my stop, based on price action, but that means this is going to be a, this should be an awesome trade opportunity. It should be great. It should we shouldn't have any problems at all. But that means trend is down, so I'm going to be focusing. Here it is. Let me show it to you. The trend was down, so focus only on sales. All right, check. So let's just put the checks. Meaning trend check. Um, targets checked and stop loss based on price action checked. If that's all I need to know, it would be freaking easy. Uh, uh, trend is down, right? And you don't even have to wait for the precise entry. Let's just take a look at this 10 minute chart. Trend is down. I'm going to wait for a pullback. Okay, here's a pullback. I don't care. Uh, all right couple pullbacks in there. I'm going to short right here. I don't care. Right there. Whatever that is. But what the market came from this pullback right here, this is where I'm going to place my stop. This is my stop. I'm shorting right here and I'm risking up until here. The market is coming down and we already have one and two targets. That's it. That's all I need to know. The trend, where is it going? Down. Check. The stop loss, where it's going to be, the previous high, check. Most likely where the prices will go in targets, I got two. We typically go for three, as a matter of fact. The other one was somewhere on here. So I got one, two, and three, check. Well, so be it. We go short, place a stop. We One of two things is going to happen. We're going to win or we're going to lose. All right. As long as we nail the trend, Guys, as long as we nail the trend, we have 90% probability on our side. Does that make sense? Yes or no? As long as we nail the trend, we know the trend, and we are freaking good at it. I have to be very blunt about that. We're good at the trend. Well, we're not that good in micromanaging the stops because we're limited on capital. <laughs> and that's my problem. I mean, that's everybody's problem. We're good at the trend. We know for the fact we're going down. And take a look. You, I asked one, what are the next upcoming targets? We had these three targets, right? Remember? We talk about this three. And look, take a look at that. Boom, boom, boom. And look where the bottom is at the 84, 
88.55. Is that, I mean, that was amazing. Calling the levels before they happen. For me, that's great. So now we have a very high aggressive tendency of selecting the trend. Check. We got that. And we were really good at calling the targets. And I, got, I, I know there's hundreds of you out there that can vouch based on our target methodology. The only thing that's different, when to pull the trigger in terms of the market. So here's where the difference goes in sync. And here's where I believe is a, the biggest problem that we might have. Some of you have good funds, other doesn't have that good funds. So in this case, just give you numbers. Here's the difference. They just say that blindly we waited. Let, let's say that this is where we're at, right there, those two targets. Forget about this specific entry. Trend is down. Market is kind of in a pullback. Trend is down, and this is a stop. You know what? I'm going to place my stop a couple of ticks above that level. Boom, right there. I'm going to short the market uh, right in here. Let's just say right there, uh, 49.54. And I'm going to target uh, the 49.11 and 4893. How's this scenario looking? All right. So we're short, and this is a trend. We are. I'm risking 40 ticks to make potentially 42. That works for me, and potentially 61, and potentially uh, 98. I said potentially. Why? Well, because that depends on how many contracts you actually use. If you're using one contract, well, you go with an objective. I'm going to go with 10 ticks. Well, but I'm risking 40 to make 10. That's depending on you, not on me, nor anybody else. You're responsible for your own objectives. But just make, make sure to understand how the mechanics of price action works. It's not what we want. It's not what we're willing to risk. It's what the market is telling us we should risk or we should go for. In this case, price action was telling here, guys, this is where the stop should be because this is where we rejected before. I'm just telling you in terms of what the price action is saying. All right, and based on our calculations, we got a targeting downside of 49.11, 48.93, and potentially 48.55. All right, how do we enter the trade? Well, what I'm trying to say is, blindly, if we know the trend and we know the stops, where it should place, and we know the targets, it's all about us. Can we risk that much? Can I risk 400 bucks to make 420? Sounds good, but you know, it's 400 bucks, the worst case scenario, that's gonna be a, a huge hit on my account. Oh man, I can't do that. Well, that means that you need to micromanage. This is when we swift or we shift into a micromanagement, right? Meaning, all right, so then that means that I need to wait for the next bar to close, and that's the next bar to close, and we need to see a breakout and strategies just to micromanage. So let's say the breakout was in here of, um, in this case, 49.45, and our stop then is gonna be here at, uh, let's say, at 73. Now the question is, all right, so I'm, 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 I'm entering here, and my, hold on, I'm entering there, and my risk is going to be now 28. Well, yeah, that's a little, bit, a little bit better. I can, I can, I can, I can deal with that kind of risk, and I'm going to go for 34. All right, skin 27 for 34. That's awesome. All right, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. It worked out. All right, but it's just depending of your psychology. But guys and girls, if you take a look at the chart itself. The chart, the price action is telling us, There, it is telling us what we should be doing. Swing high, swings low are the most powerful thing ever. All right? Does that make sense to everybody? Awesome. TJ, that's something that I have to keep and bring to my... <laughs> uh, Next slide with me. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, it's it's a it's a way for us to to do so. That's uh, that's our that's our leverage, so to speak. All right, TJ. Robert, absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, 
Very impressive. What sort of margin is required for sale? I think it's about four to six thousand per contract, depending on. No, Ninja Trader is less than that. I think it's it's about five thousand. Uh, how much is a commission per re, per return? Uh, that depends, but it's average about three or four bucks. Do not. I re, here's my recommendation. Trading oil is very risky, guys. All right. Very risky. Okay. Be careful, please. Be careful. All right, so let's see. Um, you should go for at least ten thousand dollars to trade the oil. I mean, like really getting serious about trading oil, at least ten grand would be the best. Uh, TJ, yes, price action, it's it's key here. We nailed the trend because I have access to information of um, pretty much smart money telling us most likely the intentions for the day. All right. No problem. Uh, thank you, Albi. All right. We're done for today, guys. We'll come back tomorrow. Absolutely. Yep, same hours. Yep. Hopefully tomorrow we'll see something uh, going um, more in sync with us. But once again, congratulations for those of you who took the cell setup. That's awesome. Uh, here's a here's a quick wrap, wrap up. I got this question. All right, let me let me let me let me explain another thing here, guys. You see how the market held in the power zone in here, and the market was still bearish. So this the market reached the power zone, and it held from it. So that means I'm still bearish. That means after the pullback, I can go short because um, the validity of the zone has already been weakened. All right, so it's already gone, so to speak. Understood? So the only thing that is valuable right now after the zone being tested is what? The actual low that they left behind, price action itself. The zone did its work, and once the market reject from it and clear out of it, it's already gone. I, I typically delete that. I typically don't pay attention to it. The next upcoming most important thing is going to be the prior low because the smart money is down. I waited for the next upcoming entry, and the target is going to be the next levels that we left behind. I mean, that we, we left on since the opening or the analysis. So that works out. Every level, once it's tested once, obviously get weakens. You already know that based on how the support and resistance levels works. All right? And this is how we typically uh, try to go for. Obviously, I did not expect that this movement to be like this. It's crazy. But on a day like today, yeah, that was a very impressive to see it happens. <clears throat> All right, so tomorrow we're gonna be have we're gonna have the last uh, uh, free ride for everybody to see and you know continue on with other questions. And um, guys, I mean you can you can ask other members if they're willing to share. You, you know that's the most powerful things to do. And um, Uh, oh, I'm, uh, the levels, I already called them up, and today, yeah, but the, I don't like the way that it's traded, but then, and nevertheless, um, we, I still have a target to 98.76 and 20.01.75, 98.75 and 20.01.75 on the ES to the downside, on the Russell, 
I'm still baffled about the levels of Russell. That was great. Russell is going for 55.80, and that's the last one that I have. All right, and those are the the ones that I have on CL. The levels that I have is uh, so far. That's the last one that I had. <laughs> the 55 is the last level that I had on oil. Yep, that, I don't have any other level beyond that for today at least, because I, we never expected the market to go any further down. I do expect the market to bounce back up probably to 49.10 to nine. Here, right there, this one. I will go with nine. Forty-nine, oh nine, to the upper side, and that should happen for until eleven, eleven thirty. All right. Great stuff, guys. Um, all right, so that's it. Thank you, everybody, for, so much for being here. You are a wonderful audience, and uh, they, they just keep the good work and good karma. And tomorrow we'll come back and let's see if we can just nail it. All right. Yes, Victor, that's basically what we do. Uh, we trade, we made the analysis, and I personally trade if, uh, my account and probably a few of my clients' account too. But basically what we do is just we provide high-quality, highly accurate analysis on the market. Okay? Billy, that's up to you. If you can, if you want to tr start trading oil with a thousand bucks, that's awesome. But one stop loss of about 38 points, which is the average, is 380. Then you're you're out of the game. You can't trade anymore. All right, Billy. That's a reason you should have enough capital to trade. There you go. Thank you, guys. All right. So that's it for today.